Hello everyone, Scott here. Today I'm going to be answering a question which I find to be particularly interesting. This question comes from Holy Shift Key One, who says, I have so little emotion and feel so little emotion that people often think of me as robotic. Do you ever have any problems feeling no emotions at all? Well, I can say that there was definitely a time in my life when people would have thought of me as robotic. In fact, because of my flat emotional effect and my uh, rigid physical movements, kids would often make fun of me by calling me C-3PO. Now, I do have emotions. However, I've noticed that um, I often feel what would be deemed inappropriate emotions in response to certain situations. Um, a perfect example of this, when I was 19 years old, I was going to school out in LA and um, I was held up at gunpoint in the parking garage. The gunman asked if I had any money and um, my response was to begin laughing hysterically. The gunman eventually lowered his weapon and walked away completely baffled. Um, socially, having inappropriate emotional responses, a flat uh, emotional effect, can cause some interesting issues. However, I learned something really remarkable from theater. I was involved in theater a lot when I was a kid and growing up. Um, and when I would play a certain role, I would have to ask myself, how would this person say this? How will this person react and interact? And what I realized was, this is what normal people do on a daily basis in any given social situation. Because let's face it, social interaction is a performance. Now, I'm still true to myself, but I do shine it on a little for the sake of social convention, which, you know, is a good thing, I think. Now, my lack of appropriate uh, emotional response or any emotional response at all was really baffling and um, confusing and hard, I think, for my family in a lot of ways. Um, when I was 12 years old, we adopted a little girl from the Marshall Islands uh, who was later diagnosed with leukemia. Um, after seven years, she eventually passed away uh, from that leukemia. And this was this whole experience was really devastating and really difficult for my family, who was obviously very emotional about it. And I think they must have thought I was some kind of empty, unfeeling monster because I never really seemed to have an appropriate, sad, depressed, anxious, upset reaction to any of this. And I thought for a long time that I didn't that I didn't feel anything regarding regarding my sister's illness, and, and this really really bothered me. What I later realized was that I did feel a lot. My problem is not that I don't have emotions, it's that I have a really difficult time recognizing them, knowing what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling it. Later on, I would realize that my strongest emotional response to the situation was one of anger. This wonderful little girl had come into our lives, but with it, all that came a whole lot of chaos, a whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of frustration, and all this devastation made me angry. I was angry at my sister for being sick. I was angry because I didn't want to lose her. I was angry because my family was up in arms about all of this, you know. And then following, you know, that angry response was one of intense guilt. What I've had to realize is that emotions are not right or wrong, good or bad. You have a right to your emotions. What you feel is what you feel. It's what you do about those feelings that matter. Once I was able to accept, to accept that, I was, that I was angry about my sister's illness, I was able to let go of that anger. And after that came a lot of sadness and grief that had been built up for a long time. This emotional journey that I have been on is, is very interesting and I think is very unique to Asperger's syndrome and, and other autism spectrum disorders. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, holy shit, key one. Thank you to everyone who has watched this video. You guys rock.